Number five, Zokai Gu. Probably one of the most chilling stories in this list because the guy is still on the loose. China's People's Liberation Army police officer, Zokai Gu. This creepy dude decided the best way to make extra cash was to ambush people when they withdrew large sums of money from the bank. And in China, that's fairly common because cash is used more than any other form of payment. So Kai Gu, being a surveillance expert, used his training to elude authorities when they first realized what he was doing back in 2004. What's crazy is it took till 2012 until he was clearly identified after shooting a man outside a bank in Beijing and stealing $30,000. And crazier still, Kai Gu has never been found and is still considered a threat to society. Number 4. John Christie it's always kind of eerie when it's discovered a police officer had an extensive criminal record before becoming a cop. That was the case with serial killer John Christie, who's been arrested for theft and violent assault and had even spent time in prison before getting his badge. Apparently, all this was overlooked since he got to join the War Reserve Police and was considered highly efficient and credible as a civil servant. The creepy part is, it was while serving as a policeman that he committed the first of many of his murders. As the great upstanding citizen that he was, Christie was having an affair with a prostitute. And one night, while having sex with her, he strangled her to death and buried her body in the garden behind his home. Unfortunately, this first experience apparently made him want to abuse more women, so he set his sights on his neighbor, Muriel Edie, whom he invited over, pretending to be a doctor who could help her with her chest ailment. Slipping carbon monoxide in an inhaler, he put her to sleep, strangled, and raped her, and then buried her next to his first victim. Not satisfied with his first two killings, Christie then committed some even more twisted murders. Again claiming to be a doctor, he offered to end neighbor Burl Evans' pregnancy because she and her husband felt they couldn't support another child. Instead, he raped and strangled the pregnant woman with a necktie and hid her body in a garden shed on the grounds. Christie told the husband Burl had died from septic shock and offered to help find a home for their one-year-old child. The baby's body was later found next to its mother's corpse. Mr. Evans was so overcome with grief, he confessed to killing his wife and child to protect Christie and was hanged for the murders. Christie went on to kill three more hookers and his wife Ethel. He kept the bodies in different places in his house. The prostitutes were later discovered concealed in a wallpapered nook in the kitchen by the new tenant after Christie moved out of the flat. The wife's body was found under the floorboards when the police came to investigate. Christie himself was found in London and tried for his crimes. He pleaded insanity, but the jury took less than two hours to deliberate and sentenced him to hang for his wife's murder. He was executed on July 15, 1953. Number 3. Tor Hedin Swedish police officer and serial killer Tor Hedin certainly couldn't be accused of not being consistent. So much so it's a wonder it took authorities so long to discover something was rotten in the state of Denmark. Oh right, they were in Sweden. Anyway, Hedin started his career as a criminal before he started his career as a cop. Back in 1943, when he was 16 years old, he broke into a brewery and stole some oats. Then he burned the place down to cover his tracks and add arsonist to his resume. When Hedin became a cop, he was apparently so well-liked, the population of his town held a rally in his honor to keep him as the local police officer. After that rally is when he committed his first murder, killing his best friend after a poker game. With his taste for fire, he burned down the crime scene. What's weird is that he took part in the investigation of the crime and even reported on the case in the national media. About a year later, Hedin got upset when his girlfriend broke up with him and he went on a killing spree. First, he killed his parents in their home and set fire to the place. Then he went to the retirement home where his ex-girlfriend worked, found her and the matron in the matron's bedroom, and killed them both with an axe. What did he do next? You guessed it, he set the place on fire, killing five elderly people who lived there. Probably realizing he had gone too far, Hedin disappeared. Local police had finally put two and two together and set out to find him. When they spotted his car parked by a cabin near a lake with a suicide note on the front seat, they thought they'd find the body inside. Instead, Hedin's body was discovered weighted down at the bottom of the lake. Number 2. Anthony Jack Sully After serving with the Millbrae City Police Department for eight years, Jack Sully left the force to start his own contracting business. When his business became successful, Sully began freebasing cocaine and hiring escorts. Then in February 1983, he committed the first of six horribly dreadful murders. Gloria Frabel, an escort sent to him by his favorite madam, Tina Livingston, refused his advances, so he gagged and handcuffed her before suspending her from the ceiling of his warehouse and raping her repeatedly with the help of Livingston and another escort. After many 
days, when the gag came loose and Frable screamed for help, Sully strangled her with a noose until she went limp. Thinking he'd done her in, Sully and his accomplices put Frable in a car to dispose of her body, but when they took her out, they realized she wasn't dead. Sully hit her with a hatchet numerous times until he was sure she was dead. Her body was later discovered by a butcher, which apparently amused Sully, who kept the newspaper clipping about the discovery. Two months later, Sully killed another one of Livingston's prostitutes in a very similar way, 19-year-old Brendan Oakton, before storing her body in a barrel to dispose of it. A month after that, he murdered Phyllis Melendez and her pimp Michael Thomas, again keeping the bodies in barrels. Sully killed two more prostitutes, Barbara Searcy and Catherine Barrett, bringing his total to six. After a seven-week trial, he was given the death penalty in June of 1986. Oddly enough, he has yet to be executed and tried to appeal the convictions and the death penalty in 2013, but was denied. The date of his execution has yet to be set. Number 1. Janady Mikasevich USSR volunteer police officer Janady Mikasevich didn't have a very clear notion of the principles of serve and protect. It's believed that he might have murdered close to 60 women, although it's only been proven that he's responsible for 36 of these deaths. Like Tor Hedin, Mikasevich was assigned to investigate the murders he himself had committed. In a horrible twist of fate, this allowed the maniac to pin his crimes on innocent men, many of whom were convicted and sent to labor camps. One poor guy was even executed after being tortured and forced to confess. When police eventually caught on that the killings were probably being committed by the same person, Mikasevich panicked and sent an anonymous letter to the authorities stating that the killings were a direct result of corruption. His plan backfired when he left another note next to a new victim, and the police compared handwriting of over a half a million males in the city of Oblast. Mikasevich then became the prime suspect and was taken to prison where he is said to have committed suicide.